Hello and welcome to my second tutorial video on Digistix 2 and in this video I want to look at the new uh, audio slicer. Now anyone that comes from the world of uh, MPC will be uh, familiar with the concept of actually taking a sample and chopping it up into multiple pieces and we can now do that in um, Digistix providing you're on a editable kit and if you've just noticed I changed to the user uh, user bank where we can store editable kits. Now there are multiple ways to access the slice editor but the easiest way is um, if we have a, a an assigned um, pad with a drum sample on there we can hit the edit button to uh, to edit that sample and if you notice at the bottom of the display, bottom left now, we have a Slice Editor button, which takes us directly into the Slice Editor. Now at the top centre of the uh, Slice Editor, we have a number of options. Uh, edit Mode, uh, currently we're in Zoom Mode, which allows us to pan around and zoom in and out, pinch to zoom. We have an option to delete slices and we can preview slices. So depending on what we want to do, we need to be in the correct mode. So initially when you open the editor we're in zoom mode and that allows us to pinch to zoom uh, into the waveform and, uh, and pan left and right. Now below the sample window to the left we have a detection mode which is currently set to manual. But we also have two other options, um, threshold and regions. Now if I select threshold you will notice a couple of additional options that appear on screen allowing us to adjust the uh, actual threshold at which the slices are created and also a minimum duration measured in milliseconds. So if I start to increase the threshold you'll notice that more and more slices start uh, being added to the slice editor and uh, those slices appear on uh, anywhere where there's a, a dramatic change in volume on the original sample. And if I reverse that by reducing the uh, threshold, you'll see the number of slices revert back to uh, the original four. Now if I select the preview tool by clicking in this uh, option at the top of the screen here, uh, we can preview these clips just by tapping on them. Now if I switch to edit mode, I can actually fine adjust these uh, loop start and end points. The green being the loop start, the red being the loop end. And if we tap on the uh, green marker on the left hand side, we can actually drag the loop start to a new position. Now currently there's no room to add additional slices, but if I resize slice 1 to reveal some a blank area we can actually drag a and add an additional slice uh, quite easily in edit mode now whenever you exit manual mode and say go into uh, threshold mode uh, we're going to revert to the original threshold settings that we had um, now I'm going to add a few extra uh, slices here just to demonstrate the delete function now if I select the delete tool and then tap within one of these slices you'll notice that not only is it deleted, but the space that occupied is consumed by the previous slice. And it does that because I clicked in the lower half of that sample display. Uh, if we click in the upper half of the sample display, it will delete the sample and leave the previous sample alone. So if uh, using the threshold tool it adds additional slices that are not necessary, uh, we can click in the lower half of that uh, sample display uh, to uh, add that space to the previous sample. Uh, click at the top of the display to remove that sample slice completely. Now another thing to note is we're currently on threshold, but the minute I start deleting or editing the samples, it'll flick back to manual mode to ensure that those threshold settings are never reapplied. Only when you revert back to the threshold tab will those uh, settings be, uh, be applied again. Now if we switch to zoom mode and zoom into the uh, beginning of uh, slice 6, you'll notice that the, the end of slice 5 and the beginning of slice 6 are actually 
a fair distance apart. Uh, that is controlled by this pads, padding setting uh, at the top right. And you can either increase or reduce this padding size to uh, prevent uh, pre the end of a, a sample having part of the next slice attached. If you notice there, I double tapped on the uh, padding to reset to 256. Now another method of uh, splitting up a sample is using regions. So if I uh, tap on the regions uh, option at the bottom left, you will notice the uh, threshold and minimum duration being replaced by a number of regions option. And we can change the number of regions uh, from four, which is the default, up to anything we want. And uh, it will be, your sample will be um, converted into equal size slices. Now this is useful if the input sample is a fixed number of beats. So you're free to use whichever of the two methods suits you best. Or alternatively, you can just manually enter the slices yourself. But once you've got a number of slices that you're happy with, uh, you can hit the slice to pads button at the bottom of the screen and we will be prompted uh, if there's less than 16 slices we'll be prompted for a bank to apply those slices if there's more than 16 slices then it will apply it from uh, pad a1 forward Now, as I said earlier, there are multiple ways of accessing the slicer, and another way is uh, directly from the drum kit menu. And as you can see here, it's loaded up the previously used uh, sample. Now, another way of getting samples into the slicer is using drag and drop. So, uh, directly from Files app, we can drag files into the slicer. Uh, as you can see here, it's used the existing settings and there are quite a lot of slices. Now we can zoom into those slices to take a closer look at uh, what the threshold tool did. Uh, and maybe switch to the preview tool to preview those slices and make any adjustments that are required. Now in this particular case, it did quite a good job at uh, finding the samples, but say uh, we have this example here, which nice and evenly splits into four, but if we try and split that into eight samples, uh, you'll notice that there's a slight clicking on the end of uh, sample uh, or slice one, and also slice five. Now, when we uh, uh, assign those slices to pads, a uh, very small uh, micro fade is applied automatically. But in some cases, it might be worth uh, doing some post editing. So uh, if we pick, say, uh, this uh, sample here, uh, A1, uh, we can click on the edit button at the bottom. And as you can see, that's not the most perfect of fades at the end. So we can just select that area and hit the fade out button and then uh, update the uh, sample. And as you can see, uh, D2 has a double hit on the i hat. Uh, and I think the second of those looks more clean. So we can just um, select that uh, area and uh, hit the crop option um, to remove one of those uh, hi-hats. And as you can see, I just normalize that sample and we can just do a little fade out at the end. And job done. So uh, editing, post-editing is actually quite easy as well. So you don't have to be too precise in the slicing, but it's a, a really nice addition to Digisticks and one I think a lot of you will appreciate, especially if you've come from the MPC world. Now, one thing I didn't touch on is that the pad names always remain constant when you uh, assign slices. If you want to change the name, just tap on it and hit the rename button at the bottom of the screen and you can name them whatever you want. Now, another thing that maybe if you do come from an MPC, you'll have noticed that Digistix uh, names its, uh, its pads as uh, A1 at top left, A2, A3, A4 and so on, all the way down to bottom right. But uh, like I say, if you're, if you're an MPC user, you're probably used to uh, having the pads labelled A1 at the bottom left and working its way across and up. And we can flick now between those two modes. So if you are an MPC user, no worries, you're covered. 
So that's just about it for this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time.